How you doing, Miss Dighty? Are you comfortable? Just relaxing? Yeah, I'm a good girl. So, update on Aphrodite is that she's hanging in there. I'm petting her right now. She stood up because I sat down next to her. Um, I was scared last night. I ended up calling the emergency vet because she was kind of like freaking me out. Um, Aphrodite would go into a very, very deep sleep. And as she was sleeping, she would start twitching, like kind of like a dog does when they dream. But I never noticed Aphrodite do that before. And um, I, you know, I started to get scared. Oh my gosh, is this her nervous system because uh, everything is shutting down or what? So it was freaking me out. And then her like throat was moving. So I called the emergency vet and I almost went over there last night and I told them about what's going on with Aphrodite with her chylothorax and then and that we're waiting to have um, this expensive $5,000 surgery for her and the emergency vet was really really nice actually and um, it's cool that they cared and they didn't just want to take money and they know that this is a hard thing so what they told me is that the twitching and what she's doing that's not a sign of dying that's never been a sign of dying and they told me what i do need to watch out for is if she starts to stretch like stretch out a lot if her gums get really white or if she sticks out her tongue and is panting and having a hard time breathing with her with her tongue out like that so um I'm really glad that everything was okay. It's just, it's it's a scary thing, you know, and it's a lot of pressure because the vet basically told me like, okay, if something seems wrong, you need to bring her to the emergency vet so that they can drain her fluid because she can go into respiratory failure. So, you know, it's one of those things. It's like, okay, well, how how do I know when too much is too much? So yeah, I've just, I've been on edge a little bit. Because of her condition, she has a uh, rapid breath. And so, like already, it looks like something's not quite normal. So I'm wondering like, well, when is it at the point where it's so not normal that I need to take her into the vet? So yeah, I mean, her breath rate is usually around uh, 36 breaths per minute to 44 breaths per minute, which for a normal healthy cat, it's around 20 20 to 30 is still normal but at one point last night I clocked it at 67 breaths per minute too but it ended up um, slowing down again so we're just keeping track of that and Aphrodite slept next to me throughout the whole night and um, then this morning she was up and going about normal cat things walking around downstairs and stuff so that's kind of what they're telling me to watch out for like as long as when she does wake up, she is alert and acting like a normal cat, then try not to get too scared. And then also, the specialist called me this morning and um, kind of sucks with specialists. You can never get in right away. I know that happens with people too, um, but they said their earliest appointment is on Wednesday. So we're hanging on to that and we're going to the specialist and yeah, it's a scary thing. Like, this is a serious issue. Like it is a serious thing, but there is a possibility that she can be saved. So that's what I'm hoping towards. I'm trying to stay positive and telling myself like, it's gonna be okay. Like try not to worry right now. Always purr in. I mean, she used to always purr before she got sick, too, but she's keeping it up, and then she swallows sometimes, too, and that's what freaks me out when she makes kind of gurgly noises. Dightykins. It was actually kind of cute, so, you know, she was sleeping right in the middle of this bed here, and I'm sleeping in my spot over here. And John came in and Aphrodite was taking up so much room. John was like, I'll just go sleep in the guest room. Aphrodite can sleep on my side of the bed. And so you got a whole half of a king size bed to yourself last night. Girl, I love you, Dighty.
Ay, ay, ay. So the day is almost gone already. I'm about to run an errand, but I was just on the phone for hours trying to figure out uh, what to do about Aphrodite. So I already told you Aphrodite needs to meet with the specialist, and they called this morning. But the specialist has two locations, one in St. Paul and they like rent out a space in a clinic in Apple Valley, but um, in their main office, that's where they have all their stuff. So uh, their main office was booked for a while, so they scheduled an appointment with me for the clinic in Apple Valley. And then the vet called me and he, he said basically it's pointless for me to go down there. They're not gonna be able to do anything that Aphrodite could get done at you know the the regular vet clinic he said the University of Minnesota at their main clinic that's where they have the machines and they can like look in and possibly do surgery if they need to um, and so yeah he just said it's basically pointless to go there so I'm trying to figure out um, so I was trying to get an appointment for her and uh, they don't have an appointment at the main clinic until next week on Tuesday which I ended up just putting her down for and they said that I can call every day to see if they can have a cancellation because the vet was telling me that Aphrodite's situation is serious like the sooner she can get in the better and so yeah it's just uh, it's hard you know but this happens to people too they need to see a specialist and they have to wait until they can get in so you know, I'm just nervous and hoping that nothing happens before she can get her appointment. I hope that, you know, she she can hang on and, until we get it and the situation doesn't get worse. So, um, that's what's going on right now. And I'll keep calling and I can see if an appointment opens up. But right now, I'm headed into GNC because there's a holistic approach, which the vet told me to do that. There's a a supplement called Rutin, and it shows promise in reducing the fluid in the lungs. Like it's been showing promise not, uh, or helping the body not produce as much fluid. So we're getting that to try it. So what's going on, guys? So Lola is the Coco and Lola is we Coke. And Loka Coca Bringing some happiness and cuteness to the vlog and some nonsense to the vlog. What did she say? Lola is Cuckoo Coco Loco? Something like that. <laughs> Sometimes she she doesn't say real things. <laughs> Aphrodite. Affy, are you okay? You wanna be around everybody. So I'm always like, is that normal or is she always like that? You don't have to get up. I walk in the room, I go, Aphrodite, I love you. And she has to stand up to say, oh, hi, mom. But you don't have to get up. I didn't mean to make you stand up. So apparently, root tin's really hard to find. I was told that it would just be at like a GNC or vitamin shops, and I went in there and they'd never heard of it before. And the sell sales lady's like, "Well, I hear fish oil's really good for cardiovascular health," and I'm like, "No, I need, I need root tin. I need a specific thing." So I called all over the place at all the other vitamin stores. Walmart, Walgreens, health stores um, in the area and uh, nobody has it so I should have just ordered it online of course when I first heard that I needed it but I was thinking no I can just run out and get it and it, it I'll be able to get it faster than ordering it online but I should have done that ahead of time because I had to order it online anyway. Well, I just wanted to take a minute out of the day to hop on camera and vlog a little bit. I know I've been a little bit absent, both Nikki and I have, um, but we just, man, we've been hit with a lot and we've been going through a lot and it's been so stressful and sad and I've, you know, just dealing with losing Kenobi. Um, it's been a week, you know, things are getting better. It's just kind of the little things, you know, I, I see one of Iris's white stuffed animals on the floor and I get a glimpse of it and it, you know, I think for a second that it might be Kenobi and... I just really, really miss him, and now 
we're just really worried about you know what what's happening to Aphrodite. So to thank you guys again for all of the love and all of the support. We we really appreciate it. Um, Aphrodite is you know Nikki's cat that she's had forever. When I moved in with Nikki, I fell in love with Aphrodite, and I've known her for so long, and she's just such a great cat. So we just really appreciate you guys supporting our channel and us and our pets. It means the world to us, and we're gonna get back to our normal vlogging schedule pretty quick here we're gonna get back into the swing of things and um hopefully you know aphrodite is fine and everything works out great for her we love her so much and we just we just want her to be okay so um bear with us as it might take us a little bit longer to kind of get back to the regular the regular way that we've been doing things and um we we just appreciate that so thanks guys so i came in here crying and the vet told me that i shouldn't worry yet just wait for the tests because sometimes the cause can be treated and it's not as severe as other cases. So like there's different things that can cause this and it's not always, um, you know, so dire. I'm just struggling to find the words how to say this. It's been like a long few days. So I'm just hoping that, you know, yeah, that would be amazing if, Aphrodite's situation isn't one of the serious ones. It's okay. Meow. Meow. So I ended up having a bit of a breakdown yesterday and I stopped vlogging. I've just been worried about a lot of stuff. Um, Basically, I was worried about Aphrodite not being able to get into a specialist and her passing before she could even get the appointment. Um, like with Kenobi, before he died, he didn't really show big signs. And so I think this is what's scaring me so much about the situation with Aphrodite. Um, Kenobi was gradually declining for the past year or so, you know, having a little bit of a harder time walking and that sort of thing, but there wasn't like something huge. It wasn't this, oh my gosh, like he's dying moment. We just woke up and came downstairs and he was dead laying at the bottom of the stairs. I was kind of talking to my mom about that the other day and, um, she really, she helps. She's saying like, you know, during this situation, you're probably like extra spooked because of what happened with Kenobi. And I think that's it too. I think the situation with Aphrodite, it's like amplifying the grieving and it's kind of like a, a double grieving type thing. So I haven't really been sleeping. Um, I, I've been afraid that something could happen at night and I've been watching her and staying up super late till like four in the morning and stuff like that every time something seems a little bit abnormal. And so I was worrying about that. And then another thing I was worrying about is Playlist Live. Uh, we made a commitment to go to Playlist Live this coming weekend and all this stuff is happening like i was john and i were both asked to go speak on panels at at playlist live and it's this huge conflict with me like uh, obviously i'd feel terrible if something happened to aphrodite what if aphrodite needs me but at the same time it like makes me look bad professionally if i cancel this commitment and it's like you know gotta keep working to pay the bills and future bills if something else happens so it's this i don't know it's just like been this huge stressor i think we're figuring it out if something like happens worse then i i won't go i'll cancel but as of now my dad said that he would stay and watch aphrodite so there's that and then um i have another update so this morning after i've been worrying about aphrodite not getting into the specialist the specialist office called me early this morning because they had a last minute cancellation and they asked if i could bring aphrodite in and i did so i i woke up i guzzled a bunch of coffee because i didn't sleep and i took her to um the university of minnesota and she's still there they're doing a bunch of tests on her but i do have some more information i guess um 
well i mean not really basically like what they said is we're still so early in this thing um we don't really we don't know um there's a few different things that cause the chylothorax like it's it's a serious thing no matter what but it could be like less life-threatening so that's kind of what i'm hoping for right now so they need to test her for heart disease and uh, it could be a mild form of heart disease where she doesn't even have to get this chylothorax surgery but she just needs to go on a some medication and then she can live many more years after she said the vet said that there's some cases where this happens once where the cat's chest cavity fills up with the fluid and then it just never fills back up with fluid again and uh, the cat doesn't even need surgery so obviously like that's that sounds like best case scenario but the vet said that she doesn't want to oversell that because oftentimes that isn't the case like oftentimes it is worse but I'm just trying to think really positive and it's like well maybe if it worked out that Aphrodite got the appointment ahead of time maybe that's a sign that things are are looking out for her but I don't know it just could be a coincidence too so it's just waiting to find out more about what's going on but she's there right now they're doing a ton of tests on her they're testing her for diseases and stuff like that and just trying to figure out the cause but a lot of times with chylothorax it's bless you John John sneezing in the background um, it's idiopathic and they don't know what caused it and they still have to go in and close the rupture with a surgery so it's a waiting game I just I really hope that she can live many many more years right boo hey Wyman lastly I just wanted to talk about the donation situation and I want to say thank you so much to everyone who pitched in to help with Aphrodite's medical bills like when viewers offered to do that it really like touched our hearts and um like it's seriously it's just so nice that people like wanted to do that to help her but i did just want to be clear on something and make sure we're all on the same page and um that's like i don't want it to come across like we're begging for money or that we need charity um like john and i aren't broke we're not oprah either so like we still do consider these vet, vet bills a lot of money but i don't want people to think that aphrodite's not going to get her surgery if people don't donate or we don't raise enough like she's going to get her surgery no matter what um we love that cat and we just we want to do everything that we can and we really want her to live it's just like john and i have been going through a really hard time right now and um, when I tweeted about what was going on with Aphrodite, some people commented like set up a GoFundMe, you'll be surprised with people's kindness and like we were and it, it really touched our hearts um, and it just like it just it showed us like how there are like a lot of like nice people out there who who care about our animals who who cared about uh, who care about us and um, I was just, I don't know, I guess I was kind of thinking about how a lot of creators have Patreons and accept super chats and things like that for like t as tips for their channel and that's just additional income for them. I was thinking like, okay, I guess maybe like it's okay to accept that for something that really matters and like, I, I don't know, the thought of fan funding a life because so many people have been like touched by Aphrodite or Aphrodite made them happy like it just seemed like like a really beautiful thought like like wow um you know maybe so many people smiled watching Aphrodite play iPad games play video games that you know this is like a gift to her so um 
yeah i just i want to make sure that like we're on the same page because like i don't know what's right and what's wrong we've been doing this for you know this has been our job creating videos for 10 years and we've never done fan funding or anything like that and you know for some people it's just what's done that's just their income and um you know there's people who have patreons who have even bigger channels than us and we've always been like you know we can pay our bills with, you know, just the, the AdSense and with sponsorships. So we've never like asked for fan funding or anything like that. So as long as we're on the same page and like the people who are donating to Aphrodite, you're doing it just to be nice, just as like a thank you for seeing her in videos, like like pledging to see Aphrodite in more videos to ensure that she, she gets the best medical care. like. Uh, that, that's what we're we're willing to accept. I just I don't want anyone like who has... <laughs> mom and don't stop mom and don't stop even during crises. So um, rar rar to you too. I just know that everybody has their own problems and like we could be making more than some of the people donating. But as long as you're doing it to be nice and just like just to be nice like that's that's okay with us but yeah don't feel pressured it has helped though so thank you I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart and Aphrodite, er, Aphrodite. Iris do you want to say hi to the vlog real quick hi hi I have an iPad yes you do and uh, we are going to say goodbye and wait on hearing from the doctor today Goodbye, guys.